social media is a real must these days. You really need to put some pictures up on Pinterest and Facebook, especially as we get closer to prom time and wedding time. But sometimes you take pictures and your flowers don't look as good as they really look in person. Today I just wanted to cover a few loose, easy tips for getting better photographs on your flowers. We'll start outdoors because, hey, there's a lot of light out here. The best light outdoors is always morning light or evening light. The reasons for that are, you'll notice it's morning here and I'm getting a nice light all the way on the bottom of this curved container all the way up. If you shoot during the day at the midday sun, tend to get a really hot, sharp light and you'll get shadows underneath. And you lose a lot of details. You can lose texture. I've seen a white carnation or mom or daisy just turn into a little white patch on your screen. So it's just simpler, easier, better, less harsh light and less work if you shoot in the mornings or in the evenings. Next, the only tools you're going to need are some pretty cheap ones out here. I want to show you three tools in varying order of importance or varying order of expense. If you can afford it, by all means, it's great to have a photographic reflector because that will really pick up some of that light and reflect it back on your flowers. Get rid of that extra, some of the shadows that you might get otherwise from the fill. However, if you do not have one, you may use such tricky things as a standard baking sheet which actually does a pretty good job at doing the same. Generally, you just want that sunlight and really reflect it back up at any place you see there might be a shadow. And you just play with it to get it right. Of course, you'll be out of the picture standing over here trying to get that right on. If you cannot even afford a cookie sheet, you don't have one around the house, you have a photographer's best friend. Aluminum foil. Truly the cheapest reflector we have. Take the aluminum foil out, you can hold it and use it. Or it's better to really get a flat surface, use the shiny side, just put it on a piece of cardboard. And again, we're gonna to try to work that to get some of these uh, shadows out. Really get a good reflection. You may need to turn a little closer to the sun to get some of this. However, it's going to work. Also, watch your background. I have a little linear design here, so I want it to stand out from the back with a white. If I photograph this with a bunch of trees behind, it's going to blend in. Okay. Here's our reflector, and you'll notice right away, as soon as I bring it into the picture, you're getting more light on those flowers. So angle it so you get the best light. Of course, you want to keep it out of the picture, but for demonstration purposes today, I'm putting it into the picture. You can also angle up wherever your light source is coming from and you're getting the best result. Again, the other tools, you're still going to get an effect from this, uh, this cheap little baking pan. Look at it, clear some of those shadows up, depending on how I hold it. So just a recap. Shooting outside is best if you can do it. The best times to shoot are in the morning or in the late afternoon because you don't want a harsh overhead sunlight and you don't want all those shadows. The only tools you really need are going to be a reflector of some kind, which is going to vary on what your budget is. I think down the road, you may want to invest in something like this. And while I have the equipment out, I can just do a quick show. If the sunlight is too harsh, you can use the, one of these reflectors to soften it. And that's what you would do if you get stuck with a midday. Also, if that doesn't work, you can use a white sheet. Simple, cheap, keep those pins coming. Please send them to our Facebook page and I will be happy to re-promote them. Thank you.